Yeah, because we, I think my generation is quite lucky uh, because we were the generation that transitioned into the tech that's there today. Like yeah. my children, when they're growing up now, uh, they will always have known the internet. Yeah. Right. Mm. But I remember sitting in Pakistan and looking at this screen and hearing that noise that you hear yeah. with dial-up, right? And go, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like going, what is this thing, right? Yeah. You know, uh, this is this is insane, right? And it just shows how different life is right now. Um, life, is, life is going really quick, isn't it? It's Everything's going quick, changing. but the way things are different is insane now. So, for example, yeah. when I was a when I was a kid, I was crazy about football. Yeah. You know, typical Pakistani Liverpool FC, right? <laughs> so, I'm in Pakistan, and I've been wrenched. My life has gone from being a teenager in Pakistan to yeah. being like in the village or being in Rawalpindi or wherever we <laughs> lived, right? And so, I wanted to know what's happening with Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. So, this is what would happen. I would write a letter. With my hands, yeah? I'd write a letter with my <laughs> hands and I'd say, uh, Dear Fahim or Dear uh, Tosif or whoever, please tell me what's going on in the, in the at that time I think it was Division 1, right? Yeah. What's going on in, in, in football? So I would send that letter then wow. via someone who's going to England. Oh my God. Right? Then I would wait and that guy, he's going through his normal life. For me, it's everything, right? But maybe two months later, I would get one letter back. So and in the know. letter, it would say, right, this is what's happening in London with our stock because it's too expensive to call guys. Yeah. And then he would be, he would do a table of the league, oh top oh three or gosh. four. That's right. And if Liverpool weren't there, he would tell me where they are. You know, it's really, it's really strange. I think techno like some people nowadays, they actually miss that because I was, I was checking the app store. One of the most trending app applications you get, I'm not going to really reveal the name, but uh, it's an app that sends letters mm. now, that is personally made. That is, is made so it takes hours to send, not not days or months. It's not that it's not that extreme. Okay. Mm. And I was checking the comments. Some people were complaining, saying they should make it longer, take it a few, maybe a week or two, three weeks. So when I send a message, it should arrive two, three weeks later, and then mm. come back yep. two, three weeks after that. And so I was thinking, Subhanallah, like maybe people, maybe this is that loss of contact. Obviously, mm. you're looking at it from that perspective, but also it's that sort of we're yearning for something like that as well, isn't mm. it? We're learning for that sort of simplicity. And, and also, if you look in our Islamic heritage as well, people would travel for months mm. just to get just to deliver a message. When I hear stories like that, the first thing I'm thinking: no. What if he's dead? Mm. Yeah. What if by the time you read that he's dead? Yeah. What if by the time you re you reach there, he's not he's not in the country? Mm. You know, he's, he's left while you're going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, a, and a story, a really amazing, remarkable story. Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah, he he was known for his asceticism. He would travel for months. Yeah. Once a scholar came uh, to the region where he's li living. And his fellow uh, friend, who's also a scholar, they're all scholars, they're all scholars anyway. They said to Imam Muhammad, let's go to meet the scholar. He's here in our own country. Mm. It's a blessing. Yeah? And Imam Muhammad actually became a bit angry and upset. He said, I made intention to study with him all the way in Yemen. I don't want to ruin my intention. <laughs> no. and, and so when he came and even spoke to the sheikh that was there, it's like, I know, I, you know, my, my, he said, like, my... Uh, plan is ruined, you know. Subhanallah. And Subhanallah, his intention was so good that he didn't actually study with him. Only when he went back, and then he, he went, went to make intention to go there. Oh my gosh! And, and then when he went there, he was waiting in the, you know, he knocked on the door. Uh, he knocked on the door, and the the sheikh's uh, uh, admin, what do you call it, opened the door and said, "Look, you can't come here. You have, to, you know, he's, he's a very big sheikh. Obviously, he didn't know he was speaking to Muhammad. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And you know, you have to wait here. So he just waited on on the in the in front the of doorstep. the door doorstep. Mm. You know, this is mm. uh, Imam Muhammad was known. Like, was one of the biggest scholars. Yeah. Even though he was like 15, 16 years younger than Imam Shafi'i, and he was a very good student, Imam Shafi'i, Imam Shafi'i considered him on the same level. Mm. You know? And, that's the, and then when Imam Sama'ani saw Imam Ahmad, you know, who, is it really him? You know, he started to cry, because he's like, this sheikh has come all the way here, at my doorstep, mm. just to seek hadith mm. from me. But anyway, the, the purpose I'm trying to make is that sort of like, that sort of lifestyle as well. That sort of, you know, that helped you have a mind, to like, you know, shift your mind in terms of seeing the true purpose of life, isn't yeah. it?